got a light. You've got a light? Oh, yeah. Mm, you also have got a base on your lap. Dude, we both have bases on our laps. Ooh, the light looks good. The light look cool. Yeah, the light is good. I look like a steaming headache. And I gotta by step up my, I gotta step up my <coughs> light game in this room. It's changing on me. There we go. Yeah, dude. <laughs> just like, dude. Just like boys doing sound effects as like little kids. Like, this is like a dolphin <laughs> jumping out the water and like. <laughs> 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 oh shit! Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be very be strange if that's what the the dolphin um, the noise a dolphin made is it, is it jumped up? <laughs> Man, you were doing it so convincingly. I thought that that's actually what happened. I was like, is that what a dolphin sounds like jumping out of the water? Oh my god! You guys, if you're not see oh, so much crap, Scott. I've got crap. Or if you're oh, not is it because you're in a new the place? Pod, yeah, but is it because you're in a new um, place? Uncle Rick's coming around, and he is going to put up some trim. I've got man. Wh while I was in the UK, Scott Emily yeah. did this project in my in my studio space where she tore out a bunch of stuff. She shouldn't have been she doing it, but she painted did it. all this thing. And yeah, yeah killer, and isn't it? Yeah, it's really cool. It's really cool. So it's getting there Sh slowly but surely. Slowly but surely. So yeah, Uncle Rick's coming around in a couple hours, and he's going to put up some trim, and and it's going to look great. I'm really excited about it. Do you know when you be, do your videos, do you end up yeah. with sort of like just crap everywhere? Yes. The, the thing is like, you know, like in the shot looks, the shot looks great, right? The shot looks great. And then just outside of the perimeter of the shot, chaos. Chaos. I'm just <laughs> yes. looking down as you were talking about. I'm just like looking down. I've just got like pedals all, all over the floor. <laughs> yeah. I've got wires like this. I was having some fun this morning. I recorded this video. This is hilarious. I'll just tell you the story of it. Just yeah. to sort of like, like be behind the scenes them, right? Let me just, uh, oh, this one. Let me see. Oh, dude. I'm, I'm, I watched this already. It's oh, fantastic. I... You know what it gives me? What does it give you? Josh Paul vibes. Is that what it gives you? Yeah. The oh, shot, it... the plane. He's got the angle, right? Yeah, yep. yeah. Well, I did this. I'm just going to turn it down. When I was doing this this morning, yeah. um, I, I haven't got like enough extensions and stuff. So I was like kind of squeezed in and the, <laughs> and the camera was like balanced, just sort of like precariously oh. on the edge of it. was so funny. And I was just like, if people knew the, the, the <laughs> shit that goes on behind the scenes when, you know, you're trying to get sort of like a, a freaking like 10 second, you know, Instagram video. This is the lead. That I had to like link my. <laughs> <laughs> this no is way. the lead. Yeah, that that's the lead that I had to. I could. I had to connect my laptop to my to this little thing that I've got down here, and then I've got these really nice uh, ear, like you know, headphones, right? Shores. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know where my my extension is. I think it's actually in the studio across the other side of town. So I wasn't going to go do yeah. that. So. So everything, all of the leads were too short. So I ended up sort of like squeezed <laughs> next to the camera. It was, yes. uh, yeah, it was not the greatest. Yeah. But it was, uh, yeah, just like looking down, I've just got crap everywhere. Just, I know that we're recording, um, you know, I mean, not so recording. I know that we're talking about um, how to record your bass at home. So it might be a cool, you know, thing to get into in terms of like how you record your sure. Instagram videos and stuff like that. Or because I think that, you know, recording the bass at home is different for different people. Some will want to record it to make content that might go on TikTok or Instagram and stuff like that. Some yep. people might want to record their bass because they want to listen back to themselves and actually hear a representation of what they sound like. Do they sound great? Do they sound crap? Do they sound somewhere in between? So let's definitely talk about why you yeah. should be recording yourself anyway so you can hear back. And some people might want to be recording themselves because they're doing sessions as well. You know, yeah. they're playing on people's albums and stuff like that. So there's a, hopefully we will be hitting all of them today. You I've can got like hit this it all. Cool, I've got this cool thing. I don't know if you've seen one of these. It's pretty cool. Oh. Um, yeah, I'll show you that in a minute. But first of all, before we get into that, if anybody's listening to the podcast, we do apologize. <laughs> We've basically <laughs> got our cubic factors 
in front of the screens. Oh, oh, dude, it's oh, look. ebony and ivory. Come on. Oh, Together in these. perfect harmony. Ooh. So good. <laughs> like, if you were a regular listener, listener of the podcast, you will have heard us talking about um, Cubicki Factors before. Ian and I want to do, like, a duo project where we're both playing Cubicki Factors. It's going to be called something, I don't know, some sort of, like, you know, it'll be a, a it'll be a hint towards the 80s. We even when, when based Ian... Based to the future, dude. Based to the future. <laughs> I even, like, when Ian... Because, like, if you don't know, Ian actually presented me with this with this base as he came over to the UK. Dude, I um, love that you say presented. I love presented. that. Presented. <laughs> it was presented <laughs> like this, like... Oh, like that, which absolutely blew blew my mind oh it was and, so fun um, dude i was then, nervous too I, I, I was i was teasing emily or i was telling her it was like it was like proposing <laughs> <laughs> you wanted yeah, to get down like, on one it was, like, knee. it was like i had like i had a wedding oh. ring <laughs> yeah, uh, no this is like, no this is better than a wedding <laughs> ring dude this is better than a wedding ring but it's uh, they're just like so incredible and obviously you know they were designed in the 80s and ian and i were joking about we could see sort of like foresee an instagram page or a social media page just just sort of like kind of um dedicated to great 80s like base designs 100 you know, percent, like steinbergers and yeah. cubickies and all it of might them already be out base. there i'll I mean, tell you what well, i i do follow an 80s um instagram channel i love it yes. on uh, yeah. on uh, instagram yeah and it's just what is they it don't put, do you know i can't remember let me just tell you it's just I follow one of, called neon talk that is all like eighties culture and and it's it's fantastic. It's fantastic. This was yeah. called is this the one I thought? Eighties lives. Just eighties yeah. dot lives. And it's just loads of you know, random nostalgia. Like this. Yeah. Like that. Oh, the watch. God, yeah, that's the, amazing. The Cassio. Yeah, like an old Cassio. Or like yeah. Pepsi, pictures of old Pepsi, you know, and <laughs> in, in like a in like a neon wasteland. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Oh yeah. I know the the imagery from that decade is just so amazing and strong and cool it's and so great, isn't it? Yeah, it really it's is. So and great. I mean, these bases. I feel like we've talked about this before, and maybe I have mentioned Lamborghini this to you. Countach there. Or oh count, yeah, Countach. How do you pronounce that? We, we say Countach. I mean, Countach, I don't know. If, I don't know if that's what the Italians say. That's an Italian car, right? A Lamborghini, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We were we were saying that these are like the Lamborghini Countach of of bases. And they truly For sure. are because they're just well, amazing. And when I I called, so I bought this one. So I have a black uh, a black X Factor. That you know, made in the eighties, and I called Kubicki, and Carla yeah. answered the phone. Carla still works there, and she's been there. I think she was the shop manager in the heyday. Now, if you don't know, Philip Kubicki, who made these bases, passed away of cancer uh, in, geez, in, in the two thousands. I think in the early two thousands at some point, which was, you know, before his time, and so sad. Yeah. Um, and the company kept going, but they're not making many instruments right now. I think you can still make one, but I called them to get a, you know, a, a replacement part. And I remember thinking to myself, I am going to crack this code. I'm going to ask the aesthetic question of like, if this, if Philip and this base was re truly inspired by the Countach, by the Ferrari Testarossa, and I, yeah. I queued up the question and I was so ready to be right. I'd never heard anyone say it or ask it before. I'm like, this, this, this is brand new. The offender, of course, you know, by the American yeah. car. I'm like, all right, Carla, was Philip Kubicki super influenced by the 80s supercar, the Countach, the Testarossa. <laughs> she went, oh, no. <laughs> and I said, oh, I said, really? And she said, no, it was just about ergonomics. He, he just wanted it, you know, like the base fits on you really well. And it was just about ergonomics. And as I look at this thing, I don't agree, dude. I don't agree. I no. think that, you know. Like, because it is 80s, you know, yes. I, I've said, oh, like, many times over the last few weeks, I've been like, you know, if if there was a base in Blade Runner, it would have to be this yes. base. It's right. This is the base. So I think that maybe it didn't set out to be intentionally, you know, um, focused on 80s design, but obviously it was designed in the 80s. Yes. He maybe yes. was sort of, like, really into design. Like, this is, it's incredible. It's incredible. It's incredible. Yeah. yeah, it's. I think it's like a piece of of like amazing modern art. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Like, this could be yeah. a museum, for sure. I agree. Because it's so interesting. And if anybody's listening to the podcast, I really recommend that you go to our YouTube channel. I've done a video where I show the actual uh, base itself and talk about why it's unique. But just, just quickly, just to run over it, um, the body shape is really unique, but yeah. not ugly. So it's really unique, but yes. absolutely beautiful. You know, again, classic 80s style and, and design. Um, it's got this amazing bridge. Now, it is a headless base, and I'll show you here, but it's got a base extender, which means I can extend, I can push it a lever, and it extends the E string down to a D string, okay? But because it's an extender and not a D tuner, it's an ex a D extender. It means that all of the note when it, when you tune it down to a D or when you use the extender, all of the notes on the E string stay in the same place, which right. doesn't happen on any other bass. Like, I know it doesn't. The end, like it just doesn't, right? So it's awesome that you can get that low D note and all of your other notes stay true, right? That is a game changer. Like why nobody else has done that is. You know, well, probably because it's a big old pain in the ass for the designers. You know, yeah. Um, it's but got it's derived crazy... too from it's derived from uh, upright, right? Like the the yeah, uh, extender yeah. key thing, right? Where like you know that happens on an upright because there's you know in some certain music Wagner, I don't know. You need low C's, and so on basses yeah. there are these extenders on uprights. You you might have seen those, and this was just really just taken from that. So it's not really a new idea. It was just implemented so beautifully into this bass. Yeah, absolutely. And then it's got obviously this amazing bridge where you, you tune it from the bridge end down here. Um, all of the circuitry is uh, Cubicki in house. Um, the pickups are awesome. They're both like humbuckers, but they're curved on the top. If I hold it like yeah. that, you yeah. can see that it's curved. So you to can match the radius. It, yeah, people like to match the radius. Exactly. So people that really like playing with their fingers on top of the pickups like that, where you can feel the pickup. That's it's perfect for for people like that, and then you know it moves on to the neck. So the neck is just phenomenal. It's actually laminated, so it's something like forty laminates or something yes. like that. So it's it's certainly not a one piece neck. It's, it's a forty not. piece neck or whatever right. it is, and the byproduct of that is that it is super stiff. Like it's it's like yeah. a piece of freaking rock, and it just doesn't go out of tune. It just doesn't seem to go out of tune at I know. all. And the action is super low. It's beautiful. It is yeah. a killer bass. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, talk about like, there's just not very many instruments now that are proprietary, right? That like everything is made in-house. And this is just one of the last things that was like that. I mean, even down to the yeah. strap buttons, the strap buttons are all proprietary. Like every single thing I think was made, except maybe for, you know, the, the, like the input jack, but the body, the bridge, the bolts, even the strap buttons, the side dot inlays, that's different, right? Like the every, si yeah, the inlays on the yeah. side are awesome. Cause they're really big. Yeah. So you can see them really easily. Like, even the strap buttons are different. Did you yeah, say the strap buttons? Exactly, yeah. The yeah. strap buttons are their own thing. You have to, you know, you call and order them the way it's put into, because here on the bridge, it's put in with a different kind of screw because it's going into metal, going into the bridge, yeah. right? And it, it's just, uh, it's very, it's very cool. And and I'm so glad you like it. Dude, <laughs> I love happy, it. happy, dude. <laughs> who, who would not like this bass? Well, who would not like this bass? I mean, I think that, I think if you are really, really a heavy, like vintage, and I'm, when I say vintage, I guess I'm thinking if you only like beat up fenders, right. Or if you only like, you know, beat up Gibsons or something that sounds very, very Beatles, yeah. Rolling Stones, these bases are, are not that right. They're vintage, they're but super they're super modern, aren't they? Yeah. They're, yeah. Like, and from they, a sound perspective. Yeah. And they're, they're bright, um, but they're, but they're not. But they also sound cool. I, I think for me, yeah. I think you just got to let it in. You know, people that are like, oh, that would that would be dumb. Well, no, not for everything. I mean, <laughs> there's certain music where these would sound fantastic. They sound amazing slapped. They sound amazing running through a bunch of drive because there's all this high-end content that really feeds yeah. into the drive beautifully. Uh, they're awesome. But yeah, I think, you know, if you don't like this aesthetic, then you wouldn't like the bass. But but that's that's fine. It's all good. It's would you have it as me. your would you have it as your main base? Uh, 
I think the the stuff that I get asked to do gig wise and session wise wouldn't always lend itself to this. Like I play with this guy, Jeremy Messersmith and that, and that is like beach boys Beatles. So I'm playing a Starfire. So with, sound wise, it sound wise up, and, yeah. and aesthetic wise, they're going for something very different. I could yeah. take this out on an Eric Hutchinson date though, for sure. He would get a kick out of it. I think sometimes we put limitations on our own selves of like, oh, what we could or couldn't use. Um, so for me, I would be reluctant to say, oh, I could just play this bass forever the end, but I could probably play it more than I do. I'm going yeah. to, I'm going to go there. Yeah. Diplomat. What about you? Could it be your main base? It's pretty fusion-y, dude. It's, it's pretty, pretty fusion-y. fusion-y. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think it could be my main base, Excalibur. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think that. Excalibur. I've got a. Even though you can play them passively, and I actually was talking about to that you, to you about that earlier. I think, like inherently, I think the the sound when I plug it in, what I hear is the active sound. Yes, exactly. And, and I, I yes. kind of dig quite a passive sounding bass you as do. the kind of like main vibe. But but honestly, I don't care. It is just phenomenal. Like it's. <laughs> It, yeah to own one is just so amazing it's just <laughs> yes. like just truly amazing I know, and, so cool. and also as well it's like headless but you can use normal strings on it because the balls go in the headstock and Damn they right. go down yeah like yep. it's that philip kubicki knew his stuff oh, and he sure did he sure did Should dude we before, about, before, go before on, go we move it. on let me just no, no, i'm so sorry i'm wearing a star wars Ooh. jumper i'm wearing a star wars jumper and i need to oh, yeah. i need to say to you have you been watching andor have you been watching Andor? I have, but we kind of stalled. Not because of myself, because of story. Because, you know, you said it's, it, it's a bit... It's tough on kids. It's tough on kids. It's a bit dry. <laughs> but it's slow and it's dry. And he's like, where's baby Yoda in the Mandalorian, know, man? Bring that back. Yeah, I know. So, yeah. I, I just want to say, I want to proclaim it on the podcast. And I promise we won't go too heavy into Star Wars. It is my favorite Star Wars show of all time. It's my favorite Star Wars wow. television of all time. I love it. I love how subtle it is. I love how dry it is. I love the character development. I love what has happened. I love what hasn't happened. I absolutely love it. I it has surpassed the Mandalorian. I look forward to it. I rewatch the episodes. I think Really? It's wow. the most beautifully shot and written piece of Star Wars property of all time. Now, now it's not gonna it's not gonna upend some of the movies for me that those will never like you know Empire Strikes Back forever. I love that film. I think it's one of the yeah. best films of all time. It also ties to my childhood. But this Tony Gilroy did such an amazing job. The acting is superb. The writing there's never been any writing better on Star Wars. I'm such a fan, and it has really divided the fan base because there are people that have been like, ah, oh, it's really? too boring. And then there's, you know, snooty guys like me going, you just don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying if, if any of you out there, if any of you out there enjoy Star Wars or have have uh, been wondering about this show, I'm giving it a full on Ian Martin Allison endorsement. Gold star. Gold, Gold star. star. Yeah, I have right. to say that, yeah, like I've been enjoying it, but I do feel like the tension when maybe I just need to like watch you when stories not around. Yeah. You know, has Everly kept on? Is she, she watched it with you or not? She's no, out. she bailed. She, she bailed. I mean, she was like, I know we have a lot to catch up on. I'm like, hey, if you don't want to, it's okay if you don't want to watch this show. She feels yeah. sort of missing out. You know, she's like, well, I was like, do you want me to tell you all the things? And she was like, no. So she still thinks she's in, but I think she's out. <laughs> she's bailed. Sorry, Everly. So, yeah. <laughs> Dad's gone rogue. <laughs> I have to say, I yeah. did love um, Obi Wan Kenobi. Like, I love yeah, that okay, show. okay, that was yes, cool, dude. Like I that it, fight scene. Yeah, that I know. Fight scene with yeah, Vader where you saw his face. Come on! Oh, so cool. Yeah, oh. and, yeah, and the thing that he says to Leia at the very end, where he doesn't he yeah. he doesn't demonize Anakin to her, I thought was a brilliant yeah. bit of Star Wars writing. Yeah, man. I uh, Yeah, sorry. Could become a Star Wars podcast real fast. Well, real dude, fast. you know, we haven't told anybody, but Star Wars is going to be a ongoing, basically, and we'll do a full episode on this, but basically Ian and I are revamping the entire YouTube channel. It's true. Uh, which, yeah, which is why Ian came over here. Um, 
So we revamp in is in sort of like taking a new approach to YouTube, which I think everyone is going to be pumped about when you see it. It's going to be just bringing a lot of fun to it and more of a sort of like, if you enjoy the podcast, we're basically taking the podcast vibe to the YouTube channel. So there's going to be loads of fun, loads of, you know, like Ian and I dicking about just being, you know, sort of like, (laughs) you know, I don't know, just like making fun of ourselves and stuff like that. But also there's going to be Star Wars like a little star wars piece in every single episode of the of of youtube so just keep a lookout for it (laughs) like it or not yeah 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 like it or not and before we talk about recording let i just need to say i need to say it publicly thank you for making cool shit dude i love like like making a space to like do that stuff coming over there focusing on the things we focus on focusing on the fun focusing on the like ridiculous skits and stuff dude you are amazing and 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 i don't say it enough and i don't give you credit enough but okay, man, yeah. i feel dude i feel very very fortunate to come over and get to do that with you man it's i look forward to it every time dude it's life-changing for me it has been and I think it's really going to resonate with audiences. And so, dude, thank you for taking a chance on me and on making that content because all know. day long, mate, all day long. <laughs> shall I, shall I play them? This? If, <laughs> yeah. if you're what, if you're watching the podcast, like we've obviously put the podcast, it's got, if you go to YouTube and destroy SBL podcast, you'll find we've got a, a separate channel and stuff like that. So, but we recorded this. If, if you're not watching, if you're just listening, just keep an eye out on the YouTube channel and all will be revealed. Here's the audio from, from one of the YouTube lessons that's coming up. Are you ready? I'm ready. You ready? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sure. I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> that, that's oh god that's that's Scott slapping me across the face because he thought I meant slap face face not slap base it's, <laughs> it's going to be dude, awesome dude we had the most fun and dug into like the silliest intros and outros of these videos and hopefully when you see one pop up on a saturday or whatever day they come up on YouTube, you're going to be like, ah, oh, I wonder, I wonder what these dudes are doing today. You know, that's it's going to be awesome, dude. Yeah, it's going to be so golden fun. for Instagram. I really <laughs> wanted to put that on the timeline, but I was just like, I'm not going to, yeah, I'm not going to. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, just, I just want people to see a little sneak of it, like sneak peek of it, and then obviously we'll publish the uh, the full intro when it, where you sort of like upload the video on on, uh, on YouTube. But it's going to be, it's going to be wild, man. But same to you. Like you know, you said that I changed, you changed my life, I changed your life, but you, true. you changed my as well because this was sort of like something that i did on my own and and it has been like finding somebody to do it with and sort of like enjoy all of the sort of like the creation side of what we do in terms of video content and stuff like that has been awesome oh it's been so fun I'm, yes. I'm sort of like in these sort of like business masterminds and stuff like that. I was on a call a couple, I didn't tell you this. I was on a call a couple yeah. of weeks ago and this guy is like one of the guys on the call who's like, yeah, so I'm looking for, you know, and he like pitched me, you know, pitched me the, what he was looking for. Yes. And I was like, so you're looking for an Ian, right? And he went, exactly. <laughs> I'm looking for an Ian. But he was stumbling in terms of whether he should pull the trigger or not. Because he'd found somebody that he'd actually worked with before. So he'd found somebody he'd worked with before yep. um, for years. Like they'd worked with each other for like four years. They really get on really great. Yeah. Uh, it was like proven rela- working relationship and stuff like that. He was like, oh, I'm not sure. And I was like, look, I was like, like, you know, my life pre-Ian was not as cool <laughs> as like post-Ian. I was like, you've got to do it. I was like, just from a creator standpoint, it is you know, it's awesome. And I don't oh. think it would work for everybody. I think sure. that some, it depends on how you, how you baked, right? Some people yeah. want to be the, the person that yes. all of the sort of like yes. the, you know, the spotlights on and stuff like that. But from, from where, in terms of me and my experience, I'm much, uh, I, I enjoy kind of like sharing that with other people, you oh, know, and man. I always have done, you know, I've like, yes. obviously, you know, going back to when DMAC was involved and then Gav and Yes. And, and it was a little bit of that because I was sort of shouting out to them behind the camera and stuff yep. like that. But what, you know, you being involved is sort of like the best because it's sort of like you get to sort of like share the share the actual video time with me. So it's oh, it's dude. great. And it it's, makes me challenges me as well, sort of like to be good 
Because I watch yeah. you and I'm like, oh shit, well, I need to be good, dude. I mean, I mean, I feel that too. I, like when I see your content, I mean, and I, bef- and before I was working with you, I mean, obviously I was a fan, right? So like seeing your stuff and going, oh yeah, how, how could I move into that? And like you playing the P bass right before before anybody else in jazz world was doing oh, that. Yeah, I'm like, oh yeah, god, this is yeah. so sick. And um, and the thing too that like when I came out, the thing that was so fun is you would always challenge us to lift the bar in terms of what we were doing, you'd be like, what's the intro? How can we make it funnier? Like, is this funny enough? How can we, ah, and you know, or you're like, what's the title? You're so good with titles, dude. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, is the title play the bass? It's awesome. You're like, "Mm, no, (laughs) you know, like you're always trying to up level that stuff. And so yes, the collaborative process, man, I, it's just so much fun to play music, to be creative with somebody that you trust Right. And that you feel like pushes you in, in a direction or to, to be better. And I think, I think we're we're mutually doing that for each other right now, which is a really fun space to be in, dude. hundred percent, dude. I've even, I've even started like recording the bass audio. (laughs) When I I do something on Instagram, I'm like, I I need to start recording my bass audio. Did you do that with the post you put up with the JC Wah and the, the uh, 74 jazz? Yeah. So I did it with the the ones that I did it with, and this may sound obscene, but I did it with this one. Yes. And you can hear it, right? You can hear it. And then I did it with, um, Cubicy Factor. Sounds awesome. It sounds different to slap this. So I'm just told that somebody can hear the slap sound. Oh, no. Somebody's, Somebody's calling, calling you. Me from South Shields. <laughs> anyway, we'll let them keep calling. Uh, so, so, yeah, I actually, I uh, I recorded the audio because before I normally just sort of like shot it and just sort of like got the audio in the room and stuff like that just off my phone. Yep. But I wanted to, you know, looking at you and all of your your sounds always sound so killer on Instagram and stuff like that. I was like, oh, I need to get my shit together. So, yeah. So Dude, that's, that's amazing. That's why it so, happened. So, I mean, I would love to talk about that process for you because there's probably a lot of people in the boat of like, ah, they want to record. I mean, that's what we're talking about today, like recording. So yeah. I want to know from you, like I'd love to talk about the gear, the stuff that you're using, but you have – you have always said that like, you just want to get in a room, you want to plug in, you want to start playing. And then you saw, okay, you're watching videos, you're seeing some of my stuff, probably other people's stuff where there's a nice sound. Yeah. What was the thing? Like, if it felt daunting, was it a piece of gear? Was it just a mindset? What was it that just pushed you over the ledge to it do the extra of- bit of setup? It was a piece of gear. And this is specifically for, if anybody's wondering, this is like, I guess this is the section where we talk about how to record yourself if you're creating content for, <laughs> let's say, TikTok or um, Instagram. But side note, you can actually record yourself just onto your phone so you can watch back and listen back to yourself with of this course. bit of gear that I'm using. Oh, so oh it's okay, not, okay. Yeah, so it's not just for... If you want to, you know, put content out on wherever it's for, if you just want to record yourself, this is great as well. So it's called a Roland Go Mixer Pro X, right? So the cool thing here is that I just get my phone, I wedge it in the top there. (gasps) Amazing. Yep. So I wedge it in the top and that holds the phone. Yep. And I plug my bass into this box. Yep. I also plug my phone into this box. Via if, what? Is it like a lightning cable or is it what? Like, what do you have this to use? This is, yeah, just one of these. Yeah, it's like a USB lightning thing. Yes. And That's it comes a, with that? Does it come with that cable? Yeah, it comes with all the cables you need. Amazing. So the phone plugs into it. My yep. bass plugs into it just via a you know, quarter inch yeah. jack. Uh, headphones go straight in there. Amazing. And then I can also, the the videos, those couple of videos I did for Instagram have also got drum tracks on them. So I used yes. the SPL Groove Trainer. Oh, on my, yeah. Yeah, I used the Groove Trainer. Just that plugged into it. It's got a little line in so I can plug my computer straight into it. So all of the inputs just went straight into this. Amazing. And then, and then I just pressed rec- record on the phone. And then it's all baked in. To the actual phone. I'm not You're sort of blowing like, my mind. So you, so, okay, but were you using the video application on your phone or were you using yeah. like recording straight into Instagram? No. I'm okay, just, just I, video. Just go to the camera 
on yeah. my phone, press record. Yes. And then all of the audio just goes in there. Oh, so it is baking the audio. Now, is it pre-mixed? Did you have to do something with where you're mixing the bass and the drums? You can, you can mix it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, um, you can mix it. You there. can turn the bass up and turn the drums up and stuff like that. Yep. And that's it. Dead easy. Wow. So for me, or people like me that just yes. have, you know, low tolerance for, you know, kind of complexity, it's really easy because it just all is baked in your phone. And then I can just upload it. Into, onto Instagram or wherever, or if you, if if any of the listeners are thinking about, you know, how do I record myself and and you know listen back to myself, and I want to watch my technique as I'm doing that, you know, you can just, you know, you'll be able to watch it back on your phone, um, just via your, you know, via your sort of like the video um, section on your phone. So it's just super easy. And That's amazing. again, if people are thinking about recording for TikTok or Instagram, I definitely recommend this. It's a Roland Go Mixer Pro X. Or if you were just wanting to record yourself and listen back as well, it's really great. And you can do live streams through it. There's a bunch of other things that you can – yeah, it's really cool, actually. You should check it out. I got to like, check li- it out. Yeah, audio for live streams and stuff like that yeah. can go, all go straight on there. So you can live stream through your phone and get proper audio without having to have, like, a whole load of other oh, bits see, and bobs going on. When I have done Instagram Lives before – yeah. I have always just used, you know, my studio monitors and just monitoring through the room like you've done, you know, previously to make videos. And it's yeah, been yeah. okay. But I saw a buddy of mine who was singing and playing and he had his mic and his headphones and his guitar all set up and all kind of mix processed. And and I was like, how is he doing that? And it yeah, was mic probably well. through a device like this. Yeah, because yeah. you've got a mic. So I could get this mic it. and I could put that straight into there via an XLR. You could also probably run through one of your bass rig pedals that you like so much, right? And run it. Oh, you did? Is that what you did? Yeah, that's what so I you, did. So you didn't actually just use a cable into the quarter inch in. You I went into the, a little, yeah, sexy, sexy little EQ pedal. Don't grab keep one? secrets. <laughs> secret, secrets hurt someone, Scott Devine. <laughs> let, <laughs> let, me grab, let me grab one of these pedals. Yeah, dude. Oh, man. Origin Effects makes – Origin Effects in the UK, too. They make these um, – they make the, the best compressors in the world, I think. Um, the Cali 76, which I've used for ages and ages, but they also make, and they make a load of guitar pedals, um, distortion pedals, but they have started to make this thing called bass rig and Scott's got them here. So if you're not watching the pod, there is one that is based on a 64 Fender showman or baseman head and 215 cab. And then there's another one. The blue one that Scott has there is based on an SVT, like an old late sixties, early seventies, maybe SVT with an 810. And you plug into them, right? You can blend uh, a bit of your clean sound in if you want, but it's really all about sounding like an amp, right? And it even has cab emulation. So there's an XLR that comes out. So it feels like and sounds like a mic'd up uh, Fender rig or Ampeg rig. And I will say that obviously there is a lot of this stuff out there right now, a lot of it. You can get stuff that's really cheap that does this stuff. You can get stuff that's really complex, like, you know, quad cortex. But in terms of ease of use, I think that those pedals are the best of the amp emulators out there. And I don't really? know. Really? I wow. do. I do. And I've used a bunch of them. Um, but I don't know how you feel. I mean, you're using them. And so that's a good I, I love sign. Them. I- uh, yeah, like I haven't used a, a lot of effects before, so for me it's, it was kind of like a, a new thing. But f- but it's been great actually, especially for that, like recording direct into your phone. It's so, so if anybody's wondering what the signal chain is, it's like bass into one of these, which is like a an EQ pedal. I'm not sort of like DIing it or anything like that. I just go into the input and yep. then from the output out into the input of the Go Mix Pro. But you are it. DIing it though, right? Aren't you taking an XLR out of that pedal into no. the No. No. Oh. I'm just like literally using like a stomp box. So you're just taking the quarter inch out. Yeah, quarter inch out into oh. this, yeah. Try do me a favor. Try Should I try the, it into the Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll give it a go, yeah. For try sure. the XLR out. But you can't yeah. you can do either of those things. And I don't know, the quarter inch out on that, I'm not I can't there's options where you can send the cab emulation or or not with those little switches. Yeah. I think if you're using the XLR, it se- it sends the full Monty. So give it a try. I don't know. I'll give it a try, actually, yeah. But they're great. So, yeah, so that's how I recorded those 
which is just sort of like EQ pedal, which is the bass rigs. I've done both. I've used both. Which did you prefer? So just to uh, there's uh, just say what Ian was saying earlier. There's one that's called the Black Panel, the 64 Black Panel, which is like more of a Fender sound amp. And then you've got the uh, the Super Vintage bass rig, which is more of a, a Ampeg sound in SVT amp. Yep. Like, which did you prefer? So I did the product demos for these things when they first yeah. came out. And I went really, there was John Dines, shout out to John Dines, man, at uh, at Origin, who's a, he's the product manager, killer John. player, he's a guitar player, um, but just really, really dialed in. And so he had some targets that he wanted to hit. So he was like, hey, man, can you do something like this with your Hofner? That sounds like Beach Boys, oh, Beatles. Can you do right, something okay, yeah. like this with your Rickenbacker? You know, so I was aiming for all these very precise targets when I did these yeah. demos. But I think, like, if I just had to have one of them, the one that really caught me and was the easiest to use for me, I guess, just right away was the Ampeg one, the blue one. It was the Ampeg one, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, called the Super Vintage, or people are calling it the SV. Um, but yeah, I, yeah. you were using the Fender in the studio. And yeah. I was going, oh, yeah, I should probably get back to And I need to check that thing out again. They're so good. They're so they're, good. They're really great, yeah. And especially if you just like stomp boxes like I do. And and I actually love them both. So the SVT, the biggest difference between the two is like the middle, the middle kind of texture mm-hmm. of, of the tone is very yes. different from the SVT, from right. the... Uh, than the Fender one. So, yeah, love them, though. But that's, yeah, so that's how I've been recording myself. And then going forward, I'll always be putting one of these in the signal chain as well. Amazing. Is that right? so cool. Always. Wow. Dude. I When I sort of like, yeah, when I took it out, yeah. and then just sort of like tried to sort of like, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> sounded like shit. But, yeah, it was like just not, it was like the, the, the vibe had gone. The vibe it's, is gone. It's wild when you get used to some some level of processing, right? No matter what that is, like people get used to a compressor or the Noble DI, which I've used yeah. a lot, it, and it's very subtle. But if you get really used to, dialed into, and fall in love with a amp emulation sound, man, when that thing goes away, it is a shock. It's like it just to sounds hear, yeah. and you've probably like, dialed in some bass and you've, and it's probably a little louder, right? And you turn it off and then you just hear that like very dry, almost sort of anemic. sterile DI. It's like anemic sort <laughs> yeah. of like. That bass tone needs to eat a steak, man. Hey, man. Yeah, gotta, yeah, yeah. Exactly gotta get some that. iron in your diet, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly I, that. I agree. Um, I, and it's funny because I have gotten so used to just like a, a, a DI sound where I'm compressing on the front. So typically my rig, I mean, I have a rig right here. It's, it's so funny. So, you know, Scott is figuring out his thing. This is something that I've been recording with for a while. Um, and if you follow me at all, you know that I love plugging into a, a Cali 76, which is Origins compressor. On another pedal board, I have a big box one, which has a, a transformer in it, which I think just might sound a little better. Could also be placebo all good. <laughs> um, but then I run into this thing called the HX stomp and I, it, this has a bunch of amp emulation in it as well. Um, this is made by line six, uh, but I don't actually use the amp emulation very much. Um, I use, you know, effects and different synth sounds and drive sounds. And then I have a DI here made by Jad Freer. It's called the capo or capo. I'm not sure. Um, but it has a little bit of drive option in it. It has some EQ and it has a, it has like a cab filter sound on the side that you can engage if you want. It's very flexible. Um, it doesn't have like a super baked in sound, maybe like one of those origin pedals. And so for me, this is really, really cool when I'm recording stuff for an artist because I can really do a baked in drivey rock and rolly thing, or I can do a super clean DI. This box is probably the most versatile DI that I've ever used. That said, I have three favorite DIs. So, and maybe we can talk to a little bit about like uh, why you would even consider buying a DI for your setup. Yeah, right? DI yeah. means direct input. It's the thing that allows you to take an XLR, that's that big mic cable, and run it to your recording device or run it to you know a mixing console right? A DAW, a preamp. So 
I love the Noble DI, which is the big black rectangle. I think it's the most beautiful sounding clean DI, but it does not grind. It's just a lovely, clean platform. Um, and, and if you want just clean, beautiful 3D, lovely bass, it's the best. My second it favorite, looks sexy. it looks so good. It lights up. Oh. <laughs> lights up. <laughs> the second one is this Jad Freer. I think it's the most versatile DI. So you want a little bit of grind. You want some EQ option. You want uh, to be able to boost with a second channel and have that change either the level or the texture of your overdrive. This, you know, if you're familiar with a Sans amp, which was something that people yeah, were dude. using a long time, this yeah. is like a better, more amazing version of that. And then fully baked in, fully like colored, just go for it amp vibe, the yeah. origin pedals, the bass rigs. Really? Yeah. Yes, the, the, the ones that you're rigs, using. Yeah. Yeah. So those are my three Noble, Clean, Jad Freer, Versatile, Origin for amp. Like you're going for an amp vibe, it's the best one. Those are my favorite three. Wicked, man. And why might like. I know we touched on it, but let's just sort of like dig into yeah. it a little bit here. Why might people want to record themselves if yes. they're not doing it for content, if they're not doing it for Instagram or TikTok, they have no, they've got no sort of like want or need to do that. They're not doing sessions. Why else should somebody want to record themselves? Yes. I think it's so that you can learn about your own playing. In real time, when you're playing, you're thinking about so many things, your mind is engaged with the thing that you're doing, right? <laughs> like you have, yeah. you have all this brain space devoted to actually executing the thing that you're playing. So in terms of like an academic pursuit, it's so good because it allows you, it frees up brain space to be critical of your playing. And I don't mean critical in a negative way. I mean, just actually listening to yourself, looking at yourself, I mean, if you record yourself, it's amazing to record audio and video so that you can watch it back as painful or as elating as it might be. You might think, wow, this is really great. Or you might think, oh my God, this is terrible. But face that. If that's a fear for you, face that fear because you're going to see things about your technique. You're going to hear things about your sound. You're going to go, oh, wow, I didn't realize I was clacking the string so much or, oh, wow, I can't believe that all my fingers collapse or, you know, my pinky collapses when I'm playing that stretch, you know, on the, on the E string. Yeah. So yeah. it's, it's just a really great analytical tool so that when you play and listen back and view back, you see what you're doing wrong but also be kind to yourself. <laughs> See the things that you're doing right. Notice the things that you like, but then also really be honest and notice the things that are wrong and start to address them one by one. Yeah. Like for me, for that. Yeah. Yeah. Same deal, dude. Same deal. So like I've recorded myself a lot, <laughs> you know, in the past, yeah. especially when I was playing, um, I wish I'd done it more. I wish I had made sure the audio was a bit better because sometimes if the audio is a bit crap, it, you, you get a, a misrepresentation of what's going on. You know, it's a yeah. misrepresentation. So, so making sure that the audio is really great when I was playing it back would have, I would have definitely, uh, I wish I could, you know, rewind time and do that. Um, and for me, I was listening to, well, just, and just to put it out there, when people, if you do this for the first time and you kind of like, oh, this is awful, that's okay. It's yes. kind of similar to when you hear yourself speak for the first time. I'm sure that everybody listening to this podcast knows what that's, what yeah. that's felt like, right? When right. you were like, who's that? Yeah. It sounds like a complete, you know, you know but, it, it just sort then, of sounds like this, you know? Yeah. Like, and you, oh and you realize it's like you. That? Wait, yeah. is that me? Is that really me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's awful, isn't it? Yeah. So it's kind of the same uh, experience as that. So you, there is definitely sort of like you've got to get used to it a little bit, get used to sort of like hearing your voice on the instrument. Yeah, um, that's a good call. So, yeah, so do that. And then also um, for me, being able to watch myself back was big as well. So I used to practice in front of a mirror. 
you know, a lot when I was younger. Actually, my classical guitar teacher told me to do it. Yes. And it, it wasn't so I could look at myself rocking out, for sure. Throwing it was, shapes. Yeah, I wasn't throwing <laughs> shapes. It was so I could check my technique. And, you know, just like a dancer, you know, when dancers are doing their routines, they do it in front of a mirror so they can Always. watch themselves. Yes. Yeah. And for me, I used to, you know, practice a lot in front of a mirror so I could check my left-hand technique and my right-hand technique and make sure that it was all dialed in. So, but, but we didn't have phones back then. You know, now I probably would... If, if I could rewind time, I would be making sure that my audio sounded great, that I, yeah. I had a really clear, fat signal, and I could hear exactly what I sounded like, and then I could see what I, what, what I was playing like as well. So I would be using a phone. And ideally, I'd be not only, you know, just like obviously playing, but playing songs as well. So yes. you can actually see how you are performing and how you sound within the context of a song. You know, are you overplaying? Are you underplaying? Yes. Your, are you are you digging in too hard? Like all of these really kind of sort of like really important things. If you are playing full songs, it's really going to help you do that. And if you are a, a, like, if you're a member of SBL, um, obviously you know about Players Path. Um, I would really highly recommend using play the, the Players Path songs, recording yourselves doing it, and then re like watching them back. And hey, side note, you can obviously send them into our tutors as well. Shout out to Craig, Craig Strain, who who is there coaching all of you guys through this yes. every single is every single week. He does it or every single every I think two it's weeks every, or something every two, like that. I think it's every two. Yeah. Yep. Like with the student focus program, you can send in your videos as part of the membership and get, get them reviewed by Craig. Um, but yeah, use that. And if you don't know what Players Path is, it is this phenomenal learning platform that's actually inbuilt into the SBL membership. Yep. And it's it's really unique in that it's all focused on performance, meaning it's focused on the thing that you should really care about. You know, yes. like we ultimately, that's what you're here to do, right? You didn't pick up the instrument to just learn scales or learn arpeggios or right. learn riffs or anything like that. Right. You exactly, you learned it to, you picked it up in the first place to play great songs, yes. right? And that is what uh, Players Path helps you do. Um, helps you focus on performance and we've organized this learning curriculum into nine levels mm -hmm. so level one is just like you've just picked up the bass and level one has i think it's six to eight specific performance projects that you should learn and then when you are ready you then move on you take a self-assessment then you move on to level two yep. then rinse and repeat level three then rinse and repeat level four all the way through to level nine and just to so there's like, you know, six to eight different pieces within each of the levels. There's nine levels and within each piece that you learn. There's like an hour's worth of video content where I'm showing you step by step the fingering that you should use, the, the you know, the the tone that you should be shooting for, how to navigate around the little tricky bits and stuff like that. So it's really kind of this really awesome learning system that's built in to the SPL membership that's probably in my opinion like one of the like that and the learning pathways I think is the best thing that we, we we've done dude ever. it's 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 game changing and it's the only yeah. thing like it out there and I know it's I love hearing you talk about it it's so funny because sometimes you know Scott will be like oh you know I don't know if I should be, you know like oh, I don't know if I want to be talking about this thing and I'm like dude no you, you have to it's so good and it's the thing that you built and so yeah. I'm I'm so happy to hear you talk about this because I think it's one of the best things about SBL. Um, and I've told this story before, but I'm just going to say it again. When I started, um, if, if you take a look at Player's Path, you are encouraged to, you know, test into a level. Well, you know, you say you're an, an intermediate player or you feel like really good about your playing. Well, maybe you're a level five or six. And I, um, I think... So that's what I did, right? I'm like, oh, maybe, a, you know, geez, I'm a pro. Maybe I'm a level seven <laughs> or eight, you know? And then I checked out some of that material and I'm like, oh my God, this is really difficult, especially for the thing that I'm terrible at, which is reading. So I decided to go all the way back to school, man. I went back to elementary school. I started at level one so that I could assess the gaps in my playing. And, and there is just not much out there that does that for you. So depending on where you are, I, I would actually encourage you to check out level one on player's path. And if it's a breeze for you, you're killing it in terms of execution and reading. Great. Well, that's going to feel good. <gasps> 
right? <laughs> That's like, ooh, <laughs> polish it up, dude. You're going to move on to level two and feel good and then level three. And But for me, the reading component is the weakest thing about my playing. So I decided to start at a super, e you know, or not super easy, but an accessible place Got so it, that yeah, I yeah. could yeah. really focus on that gap. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a, it's a never ending pursuit, right? There's always things that we can be learning. So I would encourage you to take a look at player's path from that angle. Yeah, for sure. Go check out, like test into a level, test into go, level five. Go try out level nine. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, bro. It, yeah. Go try out level nine and watch it's, it yeah. destroy you. <laughs> it's worth saying that this this system is the idea, the concept of it. I lifted directly from um, a, a system, a learning system that is used in the UK, in Europe, and over in the Far East as well, called the music grading system. I've got no idea why it doesn't exist in the US. I know, but it that's should. where the yeah, it's been around for over a hundred years. Every single kid that learns an instrument in the UK or Europe goes through that system. It's all yeah. focused on performance. It's eight levels. It's called a eight, a grade one, grade two, through to grade eight. Um, grade one is just like I said, you've just picked up the instrument, whatever it is that, you know, you can do your grades in piano, your grades in flute, your grades in clarinet, saxophone, yeah. trombone, all instruments have grades, right? Um, you can do it in bass. You know, you're, like grade one is starting you right from the beginning, and grade eight is generally sort of like university level. Like it's yes. it's that's that, that's the heavy. span. Yeah, it's heavy. And and if anybody's wondering why did SBL do nine levels, it's because I'm a massive Nigel Tufnell fan, and he, yes, Spinal Tap dude, um, and his amp went to eleven. So I was yeah. like, well, our grading system, our level performance leveling system will go to nine. But the difference between what we did and what the traditional grade system does is we took the idea online and made sure that people could have all of the content the supporting content this beautiful video experience as they're going through it supporting them every single way all, all the way through it so yeah definitely check it out and also just to say as well let me just check this is going out this podcast is going out on the 24th i think yeah and on the 25th of november We've got the end of year kind of sort of like pr membership promotion going on. Yep. So you can actually grab a $50 discount to the SBL membership, which will get you um, access to Players Path that we're talking about right now. But it will also get you access to all of the courses. Like we've got over 100 courses from myself, from Ian, from Michael League, from John Patitucci, from, you know, from the best educators and bass players on the planet. So it will get you access to all of that as well. Yeah. So if you want to check it out, just go to Let's Go Bass. Let's, Let's go! go! <laughs> bass. Let's go! Let's go! Base.com. Base. Yeah, just go to let's go base.com and you'll be able to check it all out there. There'll be more information about Players Path and stuff like that. But that I'm not sure how long that discount is um, available for. But yeah, if you listen to the podcast, you've been thinking about, you know, going deeper with Ian and I, taking your bass playing to that next level and stuff like that, we would love to see you inside that membership. So go check it out. Let's go base.com. Let's, base. <laughs> let's yes, go. Absolutely. Where did that come from? Let's go. I feel like it's it's something that bros say. Let's go. I, I let's don't know. Go. Probably heard it from Base Gary Vee. It, like <laughs> it's it's a thing now where it's like I hear it from other people and I'm like, oh boy, am I saying this a little too much? Probably. <laughs> probably. Probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> hey, let me just say, so let's get back to this recording thing for a moment. Because yeah, it was really cool to hear you talk about like the the ease, the the piece of gear that got you in. And you know, I I I do want to say this, if you've always wanted to do it and you've been daunted by it, just what's that thing called again, Scott? What's that little piece of gear called again? Oh, this thing, Go Mixer Pro X, the Roland Go Mixer Pro X. Go Mixer Pro X by Roland. Yeah. Just yeah. get something, right? Now, you yeah. don't need to get that thing. You know what else you can do? You can do what Scott actually did forever and actually just record the audio in a room through a speaker. I mean, you I see a lot it. of... Yeah, you of can course. do that, right? I mean, yeah. the, the most important thing is that you actually just start doing it. So recording, if... There's sort of like three reasons, maybe, why you, you'd record your bass, right? We've talked about recording it for content, right? Maybe you're recording for Instagram or for YouTube or you want to build brand. You're thinking about like, oh, I want to 
build myself online. There's that reason. There's also recording as a session musician, which is what I do. I actually do both of those things, right? I record for yeah. Instagram, for YouTube, and for other people, for artists. Um, and that's a, a very different level of attention, or at least it is for me. And then the third is what we've also talked about, where is you're recording for an academic endeavor, right? You want to see yourself. You want to maybe submit yeah. to a program on SBL like Student Focus. You're recording so that you can see and get better. I got this sunshine just perfectly uh, – just look at ah. – They're blasting <laughs> you in the face. Yeah, I know. It's blasting me. Um, so – but but the most important thing is that you actually do it, that you actually start recording yourself for whatever reason. And you might think, you might think, Ian, there's more reasons than that. There probably are. But those are sort of the three categories that I can think of. And for me, I was always a very I loved recording. I had a band, a rock band that I grew up with. We had this experience of going into the studio, spending a ton of money and getting a crap record. And we oh. went we should do this ourselves. And that led me down the rabbit hole. So I've been yeah. recording audio since I was a teenager. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think since I was like 19 years old, really with like very early pro tools, rigs and all that stuff. So I sort of take yeah. for granted that I've just been doing it for a long time. And I just wanted to tell you guys a little bit about this process for me when I'm recording for Instagram, Yes, tell me. This is what. Yeah. So I've given you the sort of like the the Scott version, the sort of like for people that just like oh, I just want to plug in and go right. Yeah, I don't want to. You want to record it on your your phone. You want to play it back, and it just sound like like it's all baked in. Yes. no shenanigans. Okay, that's my version. I, I Ian, go how through, do you do it? Yeah, I go through more shenanigans. I guess um, when I'm, you know, so I just put this post up. I think yesterday, and it's a post I did a while back, but it's the same process that I've always done. I'll just play a little of it for you. It's obscene, by the way. It's like tapping. We'll get to the beat here. Shout out to Terrell, man. Shout out to Carnage the Executioner. He's an MC beatboxer. Uh, incredible, just uh, architect of sounds and rhymes. And in uh, Minneapolis, he's he's amazing. Terrell Woods, aka Carnage the Executioner. Uh, I so when I record, I typically run into my pedal board, my pedal board du jour, which I guess right now is this board, yeah. right? It's very simple. I have three a compressor. Pedals. Yeah, I have three yeah. pedals. I have a compressor. And then all of the synth sounds that you're hearing, that was an octave into a fuzz, into a vocal filter, into chorus. But that's all happening via this HX stomp here. And soon there will be presets, y'all. People ask me about it every day. Soon there will be presets available the presets for this. Are coming. Where's yeah, the, the presets uh, are what's coming. What's the signal chain? The signal chain for me is I always go into the compressor first. Then I go into, if I had single pedals for pitch, like an octave, it would be that. So, so the signal chain then goes into this box. So then I arrange the effects this way. I always go pitch first, so an octaver, followed by a fuzz, any kind of saturation, followed by envelope filter. So you hear that, oh, 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 oh. that's always happening in a filter. Yeah. on that sound that I played, and then into any kind of modulation. So for me, it always goes compression, pitch, like octave, fuzz or overdrive, filter, if I'm using that, and then into modulation. I don't always use all of those things, but that's the chain. And then it goes into a DI, right? Then it goes into DI, got And it. then from the DI, I run it into an interface. It's the same interface I'm using right here to record this podcast. It's just a universal audio arrow. It's actually USB-C powered. So you just plug it right in. I mean, it's very simple, but it has nice sounding preamps. It has nice sounding conversion. Um, you know, it could, it, is it all placebo? I'm not sure, but it all stacks up, you know, when you're recording all these little components yeah, that go into it matter in the end. Uh, and then I record into logic and then check this out. I also record the track that I'm playing to into logic. And then I typically dip out a little bit of bass from the track that I'm playing to, right? So I go in with an EQ and I kind of sculpt out a little bit of the bottom to give the bass more room, right? 
And yeah. then I don't do too much processing other than that. I do maybe a little bit of compression to kind of even out the base, especially if there's, you know, compression even after this. So I'm running into a compressor and then in my logic session, I'll pull up a compressor plugin and just compress the base a little bit to get it to really fit, right? And then, you know, here's the biggest tip. If you're mixing or you want to put out music on a platform like Instagram, how is everyone consuming that content? They're consuming it on their phone. So take when you're listening back to it to get your final mix, remove your interface and listen to it from your laptop speakers or take a bounce it, yeah. and listen to it on your phone. And typically you'll notice that the bass needs to come up a bit, or you might need to bump up some frequencies that make the bass speak a little more. So sometimes yeah, yeah. I reduce the low end and I turn up some of the high end or a little bit of the mid range to get the bass to speak a little bit more. Got it. And then I just want to, because when I look at my phone, I want to hear. You are hear a massive bass. But there is a delicate balance because if the bass is too loud, it makes sort of the mix sound wimpy. It makes the drum sound wimpy. It makes the track sound sort of small. If the bass is just cranked, right? Yeah, so it's, yeah. So for me, I want it to feel, I want the whole thing to feel impactful. And that really is just sort of a delicate balance of the bass level versus the track level. And I've gotten it down to where I can do it quickly. But in, but in the beginning, that was a bit of a slog for me, honestly. It was like- How long does it, it take you to do yeah. like a post? I mean, if I'm- like start to finish, uh, probably a few hours getting the shot set up, getting the signal chain right, you know, playing along to the track to get that right, actually recording it, doing as many takes as I need to make it happen, and Got then, it. you yeah, know, bringing yeah. it in, then I edit in iMovie, right, and I bring the audio into iMovie, and I sync it up. You're a craftsman, <laughs> so, Ian. You're, a, you're yeah. like a craftsman. Yeah. Well, oh. it's, you know, I want it to be good. You know, I want it to be good. Um, I want mine to be good. I'm just super impatient. <laughs> <laughs> but see, but see, what's what's interesting though about you and what I've learned a lot from you is you accomplish more. Like you are working at a pace that's faster. You're not digging into the details as much, but you get more done, right? Yeah, and I think it that is that's, a trade off, isn't it? It's a trade-off, yes. So maybe I'll take all day. I said a few hours, and I mean, sometimes when I'm making a post like that, it's more than a few. Maybe it's four. Or maybe yeah, it's yeah. I take a break and come back to it. And, you know, I mean, it can take a long time. But I do think then I'm, I want to be proud of it. Like, when I see it, I want to be like, hell yeah, I stand behind that full stop. I nailed it, right? yeah, yeah. But yeah. sometimes, dude, sometimes the stuff that resonates the most is the stuff that I've put the least amount of time into, right? Right? Like wow. I'm just playing something and, and it's maybe not all super considered and the shot isn't perfect and the audio isn't perfect. And yeah. because of just sort of the, <clears throat> the quick nature of it, those posts seem to also do really well. So it doesn't, it's like the results are not guaranteed, right? The results of how much time and energy you put into your recording or your video shot, it does not mean that that piece of content is going to resonate, Right. It's like, so interesting. yeah, so sometimes, <clears throat> so I need to come closer to like, I feel like you're moving a little closer to my <clears throat> side, but I need to move a little closer to your side as well. And just put it, more, yeah. more stuff out. That's what I <clears throat> yeah. Do. Like for me. Yeah. Like after I've, you know, I did some posts over the last couple of days, I've been kind of sort of like contemplating today just sort of like mulling it over. I was like, how do I create seven of these in a day? Yeah how do I create seven of these in a day? So yeah. it's just all done in a day. That's so where you've got I, that's, a week of content. Yeah. That's the thing. I'm the yeah. thread. I'm kind of sort of like considering at the minute. So of like, I'm pulling on that thread. I'm like, how do I do seven in one day? Um, and it not, and actually, and it not take all day. Like ideally I'd like to sort of like do seven in two hours or two and a half hours or something like <laughs> yes. that. So sort of like, yes. yeah, 30 minutes a piece probably or something like that. When you figure that out, please tell me, please tell us. <laughs> <laughs> well, that one, the, the, the ones that I've done sort of like recently on those probably took like 20 minutes to half an hour, but yeah, each, maybe less, See, but like amazing. 
Yeah, because for me, it's it's the actual, the playing and stuff is not the bit that takes time. It's sort of like yeah. the setup, right? It's like setting up the light and then... Yeah. And well, you know, well, I used a light on this last one, but no, normally I don't use a light, but hey, come on, I'm, not, I'm getting better. So it's, <laughs> and then it's plugging everything in and, and yes. stuff like so. And that's like 20 minutes. No, let me be like 15 or something like that. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure like how, how to streamline that out. Yeah. What I'm I interested think, you know, in at the minute as well, yeah. just to say it, I don't know, you might have the answer to this, and I'm sure that a lot of people will be interested in, in, in hearing it, but what type of content on Instagram is is working right now? Well. For you. For me. I think the thing that has always worked for me is if I'm considering who I'm making it for, I have to like it. I have to feel good about it. I have to feel proud. I don't just, I mean, I could just make slap videos forever, like yeah. just slapping the bass as fast as I can. And that stuff would probably, would probably do pretty well, but I don't want to just do that. Right. I want to make yeah. stuff that I feel like is actually giving value. So if it's a performance piece like that thing that I played where I'm tapping the bass, now I could just leave it at that and put that thing up and feel like, hell yeah, that's me playing the bass with a badass sound over a badass rapper and just like, eat it, eat it, haters. But instead, <laughs> what I'm trying to do is, is say, I geared that post toward what I feel my audience is, is an audience of people that want to find their voice that feel like maybe they like some things that maybe they shouldn't like, or they're, they're afraid to sort of like speak the truth about what they like and who they are. And so what I find that really resonates for me is when I put something up to say, don't be afraid to try something. If you like the sound of it, be you like if now tapping the bass is like forbidden in some circles, <laughs> tapping on flats with a bunch of <laughs> yeah. fuzz. That's ridiculous. Like maybe, you know, in metal, but certainly not on an old jazz bass with flat wound strings. And yeah, so yeah, my yeah. content has been focused on breaking the rules so that you can be you right? It's like best practices to break the conventional norms or the like, well, you should only ever play, you know, rock and roll on a P bass with round wound strings, or you should only ever play jazz on an upright or, you know, these sort of very stodgy conventional norms. I'm trying to encourage people to break that stuff with what they want to do. Right. Yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. when I think about back to your past, when you started to make content on playing the, the, the lines and the sounds and the vocabulary in jazz and fusion that you liked on a P bass with flats, that was rule breaking. And that yeah, felt yeah. very like, Oh, Ooh, this is interesting. Why is he doing that? You know? Yeah, yeah. And it's, and you have reasons that you wanted to do that. You saw that everyone else was doing a different thing. And it was like giving people permission. So I think, I mean, this is a long, this is a bigger story, but I think what's working on Instagram is being truly me. The, the stuff that resonates the hardest is when I am not trying to impress, when I'm not trying to floss, when I'm trying to say, this is actually what I like. So there's a yeah, bit of vulnerability. Yeah, like leading, leading more into who you are. Yes. Yes. And that happens if I'm speaking in a post and I'm talking about maybe an embarrassing thing or, or I'm trying to give a bit of motivation. It happens in that regard. It happens when I'm playing and talking about how an unorthodox thing I used on a track, right? Or I think just straight value where I'm showing something. I'm saying, hey, check out this bass line. This is how you do it. Hey, check out this yeah. pedal chain. This is how you do it. Scott, all the way to a post that I did value led where it was these sheet metal plugs that you can buy from Amazon <laughs> yeah go into these holes and it keeps you from plugging into the wrong thing that <laughs> post i did that in a hotel room in leeds when i was out for the slap accelerator yeah. that has been one of my biggest posts and it, it's not sexy it's not me slapping a cool bass riff it's saying hey there's all these holes on pedals 
And instead of leaving them all open and, oh God, I'm plugging into the wrong thing. You leave yourself one. That's the only one that's available. <laughs> that's you know? so interesting. Yeah. Because it's value. It's, it's actually something that's useful to someone versus highlight reel just trying to impress. Just trying to impress. Yeah. Yeah. So it's getting what, the mix right, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. How about for you? What's, what content is working for you? I'm not sure, man. Like, I'm just kind of sort of like, I guess, sort of like discovering it again. Like I'm I'm interested in making content for that platform again. And I'm looking for the arbitrage opportunity. That's what I yes. always do. I'm looking Ooh. for sort of like, yeah. And yeah. what does that mean? What is What does arbitrage opportunity to you mean? So like, it's, it's, so for instance, it's, you'll see kind of like trends of, it's, it's, it's a format change. It's, it happened on YouTube, right? So when YouTube introduced shorts, I'll give you an example of an arbitrage opportunity on YouTube that, that's been and passed now. Um, so when shorts were first introduced on YouTube, yes. YouTube, the platform, wanted to really have a really quick user adoption of shorts. They wanted their yes. users to fall in love with shorts. Yes. Therefore, they needed their creators to want to create shorts, which if you don't it. know what, yeah, yeah, to use it, right? If you don't know what this is, a short is a video under 60 minutes, under 60 seconds. And it's something yeah. that uh, YouTube hadn't done before and they wanted to do to compete with the likes of TikTok and Instagram, right? So they created this thing called shorts and they wanted to get all of the creators on that platform to start using it. So they created an arbitrage opportunity where if you created shorts, they would flood that video all over in front of people yes. that might like your audience. So it drove the creators to be like, huh, when I do a long form video, I might get 200 new subscribers, 250 new subscribers. When I do a short, a, a video that's under 60 seconds, it, within this period that I'm talking about, which was kind of like 18 months ago, when you did a short, you might get 2,000 subscribers. You might get 20,000 subscribers off that right. short. Right. So there was this opportunity where the, 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 the format of the content gave you kind of sort of like an 80-20 effect. You were putting in sort of like you know, 20% effort and you were getting like 80% more results. So what, yeah. Just, oh! Yes. So, and like to bringing it back over to Instagram, there was like an arbitrage opportunity again, maybe sort of like 12 months to 18 months ago with uh, carousels, specifically in the design uh, com uh, community. So all of the Instagram pages that were focused on design, if you were a designer, a website builder or whatever, right? everybody started moving to these carousels where you would tell a story, a design story over carousels. I saw a few people trying to do it within the music space. I tried to do some. They didn't have as much of an effect, mm. but specifically within the design community, it was huge. And again, mm. Instagram had created this new format. They wanted adoption. So they created that this arbitrage opportunity, which means you were going to get outsized results. Um, yes. You know, when, when sort of like pop against sort of like some other kind of format. So yeah. for me, I'm often looking when I'm thinking about, oh, I want to, you know, get into this platform. I'm trying to spot that if there's any or arbitrage opportunities. Like if I'm creating whatever content, you know, I want to make sure that I'm doing it within a format that the, uh, that the platform itself really likes and then shares it out and it helps get subscribers and stuff like that and followers. Yes. So, and I'm not seeing anything obvious at the minute. I'll be honest that I've, yeah. there's just, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, one, another, another arbitrage opportunity was reels, right? When they started to do reels exactly. to compete yeah. with TikTok and we haven't talked yes. about TikTok. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure like if, if there's a huge opportunity in TikTok, I know that there is, but Man, I haven't I haven't cracked that code yet. Um, I just don't enjoy using it as much as I enjoy Instagram. And yeah. here's here's something like you're so good about thinking about that as like opportunity for more growth, opportunity for business. Like you're very much oriented in this way of like what's going to create the most growth, what's the biggest opportunity. You talk about arbitrage. I will say like 
as a, as a listener, if you're listening to this and you're like, yes, awesome, that you need to follow Scott's model. But if you're a podcast listener and you're listening to that and you're like, gross, I don't like these words. I don't like thinking about the algorithm. I just want to yeah, make yeah. cool stuff. Just do it. Because that's how I started. Like when I first started, I was not thinking about when I should post, what was going to resonate. I started to just post the stuff that I liked. And I think you can always come back to that. If you don't have a big expectation oh, yeah. around like, oh, okay, I need this to grow. I need to find the opportunity I want to monetize. Um, it's okay. You can just make content that you really like and that tickles you when you put it up. And then if someone responds to that, you go, oh, cool. That's how it starts. I think for me, if I start to go too much down the way of like, well, what format do I need to jump on? What thing do I have to look for? What's the thing that's going to give me the most clicks, the most, I start to, I start to get like a little bit fatigued. Do you so get fatigued? Me, yeah, I do. I do. But you get excited. And, and I love that. I love that. You're like, yeah. ooh, 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 let's figure this out. It's like, for you, it's like a puzzle. It's like a game. It's like a Rubik's Cube. You know, for me, it's like, Shall oh, I tell you I, where it comes from? This yeah, is the please, cool thing where it please. comes from. Yes. There's four buttons. There's four buttons in front of you, okay? This is it, like an analogy off the top of my head, right? There's four buttons. Yeah. And to press one of the, each of these buttons takes exactly the same amount of effort. Mm -hmm. Every single button takes exactly the same amount of effort to press. And three of them are going to give you a result that's like this. And I'm holding like my fingers up in front of me. That's a centimeter. Small, small yeah. result. But, but one of the buttons is going to give you a result. That's like 10, 10 times what yes. the other three will do. And, but and the, the important thing to realize is that the effort to press the buttons is all identical. It's all identical. So yes. that's why, it, it, that's what interests me. I'm sort of like, yes. it's not really a, it's because I'm interested because I know it goes on. Yes. That it's actually, it's, it's the inner geek. I know that there's all of these weird sort of like things <laughs> going on. <clears throat> I know there's four buttons. I know that yes. all of them take, it take exactly the same amount of effort to press yes. down. And I want to make sure that I know we, the right one to press down. So I get that I get the 10 times results. Cause I'm going to feel like a chump if I'm pressing the wrong button. <laughs> I'm going to feel so bad. Okay. I'm going to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pressing this, I'm pre pressing this button and somebody over here is pressing that other button. And we're both putting in the exact, exact same amount of effort we're but, both putting in like an hour worth of so it's yes. actually not the content itself in a right. way it's to do yeah do you know i'm the sort of like thread i'm pulling on it's it, weird right it's the strategy it's the it's are you smart about the time that you're putting in and the button that you're pressing but let me ask you this because there are people that are like but how do you okay let me ask you this how do you know which button to press okay so this is where I'm struggling with Instagram at the minute because I've, I haven't gone sort of like deep into it. I'm just sort of like over the last week, I'm like, oh, maybe I should post some more stuff on Instagram. But instantly I'm like, what button is, what button should I be pressing? So um, it's like, how do you find out? You look at other accounts, basically. There will be, there are other accounts that will show you what kind of like what's going on. So I'll, I'll yes. tell you, uh, so for instance, you know, Josh Paul. Yes. I do not know why he hasn't got way more followers than he's got. Same. I agree. Same. So my suspicion, because his content is phenomenal. Phenomenal. And, and it's authentic and he's got yes. a vibe and that guy rocks. Like, he dude. rocks. I know. Man, go follow like if, go follow it's Josh Paul immediately. That guy looks super cool. Like way cooler than us. <laughs> right? Yes, so yes, yes. Um, and it's and I think that he should have a huge following. He should I be in have, the hundreds of thousands of followers. I numbers. think so, yeah. Yes, I yes. I have a suspicion that he's pressing that one of the other three buttons. And I'm not sure why. So mm. I, that that's my suspicion. That he's mm -hmm. So it's nothing to do with him. It's nothing to do with his playing. It's nothing to do with his content. It's something to do with the the for something. There's something going on because it doesn't make sense to me. And normally, I when know. something doesn't make sense to me, it doesn't. You know, I mean, there's something going on behind the scenes. So, 
Yeah, so it's fine. I was going to blow it up and and, and kind yeah, of dig it into what they're, what doing. they're doing. Yeah, but I was <clears> going <throat> to wonder, in order, like when you started making YouTube content in two thousand seven, eight. Oh. I mean, you did not know no, wait, what button to press, and I so didn't. I was going. I to didn't say, even know there was a button. <laughs> and 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 see, that's the thing. The thing that I think is is scary scary is the wrong word the thing that i think is dangerous about telling people that haven't produced content you got to know what button to press is that it makes them feel like it's not worth doing if you don't know yeah, the button yeah, yeah. no i get the point yeah, the yeah, problem yeah, is yeah. you got, i think you got to press all the wrong buttons for a long ass time so you i gotta will press the yeah. wrong button over and over before you know or before you go Ooh, i wonder if i should be pressing a different button yeah, is that, I, what do you think I, of that? Yeah, oh, dude, yeah. Like, so for for instance, I think I started on YouTube around 2011, actually, 10 or 11 okay, or something okay. like that. Oh, no, 2009 or 10 or something like that, right? I don't think I even realized <clears throat> that there were other buttons to press until yes. about five years in. Mm -hmm. So I did five years of posting content every single week before I realized, and here's the weird thing like when I, I i pressed the button by accident we should do a podcast you know like you know on this kind of topic because yes. it's fun i pushed the i pushed the button by accident and i was like holy shit what <laughs> like happened a, just it was like the lotto what button was it at the time it, what button was that it was I, I so i was doing all of the stuff posting the videos every week i was like being yeah. chipper and sort of like you know and all of that on camera <laughs> and stuff like that i created uh, i created some vlog style content mm. and it blew up like it, it was, was just like change it was a format change that was the button oh and i was like and it blew my mind i was like because it's 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 weird to see it happen when you're like Oh yeah, I'm getting 300, 300 subscribers every day on YouTube. Three hundred. Oh, I just got nine hundred. Then nine hundred. Then nine. And your videos go from like thirty thousand views to a week to a hundred thousand views every time you post wow. a video. Like it was Reacts. just a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand, just like yeah, just from a format change. So yeah, it's super interesting to me. I'm like super geeky about it. Because, I guess because I lived through it and I saw. I was like, whoa. To your point, though, it is something that you should, people shouldn't worry about. They shouldn't worry about it. You can't. They should just get going. Yes. Yeah, because you just don't know. You don't freaking know. You don't. Yep. You don't. You're not even pressing a button. You just need to press that button for sort of like you know a yeah. long time and then start worrying about it. And guys, I I told Scott this when I was just in Leeds. I got some. I got a chance to spend some time with April K. If you don't know April K, she started out on Instagram, I think, in TikTok as like a model and influencer. And then when she started to play the bass, or like she started to post with the bass and do play alongs and stuff, she exploded. And she's got you know I don't know half a million, maybe more than that, or maybe a million followers on all the platforms. And she does massive brand deals. I mean, she makes her living like working with, you know, huge, huge brands, Clearasil, Pepsi. I don't know if Pepsi's right, but you know, like Sounds things good. that you've heard of. Yeah. Right. And she told me that after she got a couple of brand deals, she made some money. Like in the beginning, it was all scrappy. It was content that she was shooting on her phone. Right. And she found like an angle that like, that worked for her and like a format that really worked for her. And she would always connect it to fashion and she would do her hair in a, in a, in a certain way. And like, amazing. it was amazing. It was amazing. And it was in everybody's feed. Feed, right. It's like she was un unavoidable um, and yeah. it just exploded her. And she discovered that when she got, you know, she got some money, she moved into a new place. She, you know, changed her lighting. She changed her audio. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh man, you know, she was making good stuff now. Now it's really going to explode. And it went the opposite direction. It like started to tank her channel. And she yeah. realized that what was her thing was the the real thing like where you can see yourself pushing the record button stepping back the audio isn't amazing right the shot isn't super considered you see your bed maybe it's a little bit unmade 
that's people wanted to see the real well the real april k i mean she was still focusing on what she was wearing and the tune she was playing but it was like not high level production in like a studio with beautiful lighting yeah. and you know and she found that that was a thing for her like she needed to go back to being more real and yeah. i struggle I, I want the production on my stuff to be high the audio to be good, the the video to be good, but occasionally I'll put out something from a practice space that a buddy of mine shot. We weren't we weren't gonna do it, but you know, and I'll throw it up, thinking, and, and that will really resonate because it's it's like a format change. It's like different than what I've been doing, yeah. And people go crazy for it because it looks different than the stuff that you know, the same old sort of produced stuff that I've been doing. So it's. It just, you, you have to do it. What I'm saying is you have to do it, change it, and then see what happens when you have to push a button, then push another button to even know yeah, how it's going to work for you. That April K story is great because she was obviously pushing the right button and then she slipped off that button, started pressing another button. Exactly. And then was like, oh. Oh. So yeah, that was the opposite of me. Like I was pressing the button, it was the wrong button. Then I started pressing the right button. And actually since, and here's the deal as well, just to go down that rabbit hole, not not to sort of like, you know, but I think it is, it is really interesting that sometimes that button that you press in, it, it, it changes. Mm, yes, it So does. April K, she had, had her format. It was killing it. And then she changed the format i moved off that button started pressing another button and then was like ah oh, move back move back everything's good right yeah. um when you've been publishing on these channels for for long enough you'll realize that when you find that let's call it an arbitrage opportunity that it is exactly that it is like it's it's like a, a moment in time yes. so the vlog style content was a yes. moment in time That's right that only lasted really for around 18 months maybe two years and yep. then it kind of just didn't it kind of you know it, it did its thing everybody was used to it every it was like totally new nobody had seen anything like that when exactly. i started doing it yeah. within the base community and then it was like everybody was like oh it's scott doing that vlog thing again then the, uh, that opportunity went away. Like shorts on YouTube, that yes. opportunity, that went away. We actually really missed that, you know, like. I know, oh, I did. kills me. I know. Um, so the shorts thing, that went away. The Instagram carousels, the reels on Instagram, you know, they're okay. You know, they're still okay, but they're not what the opportunity you had, you know, back in the day. So a yeah. lot of it. Another all, one was hashtags, yes. Scott. Hashtags. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I remember I would get, I mean, I had, you know, 7,000 followers or something at the time. And <laughs> I would do a video post and I would put 30 hashtags under that post. Remember those days? And yeah. I would get like 40,000 views. And of those 40,000, 27,000 would be brand new eyeballs just crazy. because I put hashtags. And then there was a time when that just stopped. I would do the same thing, put those same hashtags. Yeah. Then I'm like, oh, geez, I'm switching them. And I'm trying, to, I'm trying to figure out, like, I was pressing that same button, but that button was no longer working, right? Crazy, because right? Yeah. the algorithm changed. <laughs> God damn. Oh, I'm going to become a gardener or something like that. You know, like, freaking my pansies, are, my pansies are growing just so like I want them. Do you guys have pansies? My mom used to like do I don't know. Those like I, I don't know. Is it, it pro we probably do <laughs> like a pansy? Oh my word! I think I feel like I could have mentioned any other flower, and it would have sound cooler than a pansy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, could be right, <laughs> dude. I'm gonna yeah, have to yeah, bounce. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I've it was got, fun. I've, this was I've fun. got a call coming up, but man, it was awesome, and hopefully everybody really enjoyed the conversation. I know I have. Yeah. Headline for everybody or the takeaway <clears throat> is start recording, start recording. You can do it scrappy. You can do it great. Um, recording, there's there's a wide variety of reasons to do it. And if you start doing it, you'll probably be pulled into a new direction that will only be positive. You're going to learn a lot about your playing. You're going to start maybe making content. You're going to start recording for an artist or for your own band or your own purposes. It's one of the best, best things you can do for your playing. Absolutely, Period, man. absolutely. And if anybody missed it, I've been using that Roland Go Mixer Pro X. Shout out yep. to Roland because it's badass. And also yeah. shout out to Origin Effects because yeah. they sent me these and they absolutely slay. 
And Killing. remember as well, if you want to grab a, if you've been thinking about grabbing a membership at SBL, come and learn it with Ian and I and all of the other the tutors over SBL. All you need to do is go to Let's Go Let's Go Base. Base. Let, let's Go Base dot com, and uh, and you'll be able to get that discount over there. Um, and that's it. That's We're it. done, dudes. We're done. Take it easy. We'll see you next time. Bye. Take care, everybody.